morning my dear students today we will discuss on transnic plants and their applications the conventional methods of developing new plant varieties through biotechnology are through hybridization mutagenesis polyploidy and induction of semiclonal variation in plant cultures however with the advent of genetic engineering the most effective approach is through the transfer of desired transin to recipient plants the plants harboring the desired gene from the unrelated organism are called the transgenic plants ever since the development of cannabinoid resistant first transgenic tobacco lines in 1983 several transins which confer resistance to insects viruses herbicides environmental stress and senescence have been successfully incorporated into different plants there are several reports on the improvement of nutritional content of plants modifying plant products lignin and starch content and also on employing plants as bioreactors for production of therapeutic agents antibody fragments and vaccines so today let us discuss some of the important applications of transgenic plants first let us take up herbicide resistant transgenic plants there is about 10% loss in global crop production annually due to weed infestation despite spending around 10 billion dollar on the purchase of 100 different chemical herbicides the unwanted weeds have to be removed using herbicides but these chemicals do not discriminate weeds from useful plants the transgenic herbicide resistant plants developed through genetic engineering techniques can withstand deadly effect of these chemicals thereby allowing only the destruction of unwanted weeds glyphosate is one of the commonly used herbicides which inhibits the enzyme 5 enol pyruvyl schemate three phosphate synthase we call it in short epsps which is involved in aromatic amino acid synthesis in plants three strategies are usually employed for the production of glyphosate resistant transgenic plants the first one is the overproduction of epsps enzyme The EPSPS enzyme from Petunia hybrida is overexpressed so that enough of it remains available for cellular functions despite the presence of the herbicide. Secondly, the production of EPSPS enzyme which is not affected by glyphosate. In this case, glyphosate tolerant EPS PS gene derived from agrobacterium strain CP4 was introduced to soybean and a transgenic soybean exhibited high tolerance to glyphosate in the third point production of enzyme which deactivates the glyphosate in this case the enzyme glyphosate oxido reductase we call it so in short cox gox deactivates glyphosate by breaking it down into glyosylate and amino methyl phosphoric acid cox gene was isolated from acromobacter species and incorporated into many crops the transgenic plants develop high resistance to glyphosate 
The combined expression of Gox gene and mutant EPSPS gene from Agrobacterium strain CP4 produce very high glyphosate tolerance and this approach has been used in the production of herbicide resistant plants commercially. For example, the production of Roundup Ready Maize variety by Monsanto USA. Now let us take off insect resistance transnic plants. Insect resistant transnic plants are produced through genetic engineering of crop plants with insecticidal toxins. One of the insecticidal proteins is called Crassulize or we call cry proteins produced by Bacillus thuringiensis which kills harmful insects and larvae. The cry proteins are produced by chrysins. The protoxin cry protein having the size of 130 kilodalton has toxic function localized in the end terminal half while the crystalline nature is produced by C-terminal half. When the cryoproteins are ingested by the insects, proteolytic clavis is produced in the alkaline environment of insect midcut, producing a 60 kilodalton toxic core fragment. The toxic core fragments bind to highly specific receptors present in the membranes of mid-cut epithelial cells. The membranes develop pores which results in the influx of ions and water into the epithelial cells resulting into cell lysis and subsequent cell death. The cryoproteins are about 80,000 times more toxic to the target insects than those conventionally used organophosphate insecticides and also are highly selective in their action. Insecticidal protein genes such as Cry1AA, Cry1AB and Cry1AC derived from Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Kurstaki have been used to develop insect resistant transnic plants. The level of expression of these genes was very low but significant increase in the gene expression was observed when truncated gene containing only the end terminal portion and a strong promoter were used. The commercially available Bt cotton is developed with Cry1AC protein from Bacillus thuringiensis and is resistant against insect Helicoparva ermigera. Let us take off virus resistant transnic plants. Many important crops are vulnerable to wide range of plant viruses. They cause considerable crop damage and significantly reduce yields. Due to the absence of effective chemical treatments for plant virus infection, scientists had attempted to develop transnic virus resistant plants by expressing gene for cot protein. The expression of cot protein in the plants significantly reduces the virus ability to infect plants and spread systematically. The precise mechanism by which the presence of cord protein genes inhibits viral proliferation is not completely understood, but it is most likely that the resistance is developed in transnic plants due to blocking of viral uncoating process by cord proteins. Now we will be having stress tolerant transnic plants. Plants 
unlike animals, cannot physically avoid the adverse environmental conditions mainly due to their static position. Production of oxygen radicals are consequences of physiological stress to plants. Superoxide anions are the most potential damaging oxygen radicals causing oxidative damage to proteins, nucleic acid, and other important macromolecules of the cells. These damaging superoxide radicals can be managed by converting them to hydrogen peroxide by these mutase enzymes and then to harmless water and oxygen with catalase. The transnic tobacco developed through the introduction of superoxide dismutase driven by 35S promoter from cauliflower mosaic virus acquired significant tolerance to oxygen radical damage. They were three to four times more tolerant to oxone damage as compared to non-transformed plants. Now we have slow ripening fruits. Farmers incur heavy loss due to premature fruit ripening and softening during long distance transport from farms to marketplaces. The most important enzyme responsible for fruit ripening is polygalactoronase, which degrades the pectin of the fruit cell wall, thereby softening the fruit. Antisense RNA technology is used to develop transnic tomato with slow ripening fruits. The antisense gene of polycalectoronase enzyme is introduced into the plant which also contains the endogenous normal polycalectoronase gene. The transcription of the two genes in the nucleus yields antisense and sense RNA transcripts which will best pair to produce double-stranded RNA molecule. This event prevents the translation of messenger RNA and a double-stranded RNA is destroyed by RNases present in the nucleus. The transnic tomato showed 90% reduction in the production of polygalactoronase enzyme. The transnic tomato developed by Calzin, a US-based biotechnology company using antisense RNA technology is known as flavor saver tomato. The USA Food and Drug Administration on 18 May 1994 ruled that the flavor shaver tomato was as safe for human consumption as normal tomatoes that were produced by the conventional means. Now we have modification of plant nutritional content. Agronomists and plant breeders are successful in optimizing the useful nutritional properties, for example, protein, oil content, vitamin, or iron content, and increasing the productivity of a large number of important crops. Employing traditional methods for crop improvement is difficult and slow as they depend on existing genetic content of cross breeding strains. But the use of genetic engineering techniques allows scientists to dramatically speed up the process of developing plants with improved characteristics by introducing new desirable characters. Let's, let us take off amino acids. The major seed storage benzylin protein of P contains 7% lysine but no sulfur containing amino acids like methionine and cysteine. The sulfur content 
in the seed protein of pea can be improved by using a sunflower seed storage protein called sunflower albumin 8, SF8, which contains 23% methionine plus cysteine. SFA8 was isolated from sunflower plant and fused with benzylene zinc promoter so that the transin was expressed in the seed at correct developmental stage. The benzylene zinc promoter and SF8 gene construct was transferred into the P and transnic P sheet contained proteins with 40% increase in the sulfur containing amino acids. Then we have vitamins. Vitamin A deficiency is a common problem in those regions where rice is consumed as staple food. This is because the rice grain does not contain pro-vitamin or beta-carotene, which is important for vitamin A production. Deficiency of vitamin A produces night blindness among children. Translink rice can be created which contains high qualities of beta-carotene and are called golden rice because the grains are yellow or golden colored due to rich content of beta-carotene. Three transins which provide phytosynthesis, phyton desaturase, beta-carotene desaturase, and lycopene cyclase activities are transferred into rice using agrobacterium mediated gene transfer. The transnic golden rice contains provitamin as high as 85% of the total carotenoids present in the rice grain. Next, we will be having modification of plant appearance. We will take off preventing discoloration. The main obstacle for the food industry is discoloration of fruits and vegetables. Several food additives are used presently to retain the color. However, there is concern over the safety of some additives used in the food industry. The discoloration in the fruit and vegetable is caused by polyphenol oxidases as it induces the oxidation of monophenols and odiphenols to oquinones. Discoloration can be reduced to some extent by inhibiting the activities of polyphenol oxidases. Vectors are constructed with full length or partial potato polyphenol oxidase cDNA in antisense orientation under the control of coliform mosaic virus 35S promoter. When the zinc construct was introduced into commercial varieties of potato, the transnic plants showed higher level of resistance to black spot with the disease of enzymatic discoloration of fruit as compared to the non-transformed potatoes. Then we'll take off molecular farming. The plants are used as bioreactors for large-scale production of proteins and chemicals which can be completely novel to them. The advantages of using plants as bioreactors are that they are easy to grow and can generate considerable biomass. In the laboratory scale, plants have been used to produce bioplastics, monoclonal antibodies, vaccines, and number of potential therapeutic agents. First, let us take off bioplastics. The production of bioplastics or biodegradable plastics in plants is 
one of the important examples of molecular farming. Polyhydroxyalkanoids PSA, form the bioplastics and polyhydroxybutyrate PSB, in short, is the best characterized PSA which is usually found as intracellular inclusions in wide variety of bacteria. Polyhydroxybutyrate accumulates as high molecular weight polymer in alkylations tropus up to 80% of the bacterial dry weight. Expression of PSAA, PSAB, and PSAC is essential for polyhydroxybutyrate production. In one scheme of transnic plant production containing PSB, only two genes, PSAB and PSAC, were introduced into Arabidopsis plants because acetoacetyl CoA was already present in the cytoplasm at the start of pathway of isoprenoid production. The microbodies of bioplastics were randomly formed in cytosol, nucleus, and vacuoles as the introduced two genes were not tagged with target peptide sequences. The amount of bioplastics was relatively low, about 2200 microgram per gram fresh weight. In the second method, all the three genes, PSAA, PSAB, PSAC, were transferred into Arabidopsis plants after tagging with Robisco small subunit transit peptide. PSB biosynthesis pathway occurred only in chroplas and PSB accumulation was found to be more. Then we will come to antibody production. Secretory IgA antibody can be produced in plants. The secretory IgA protects against dental illness produced by Streptococcus mutans. It normally exists as a dimer of two IgA molecules which are joined by a J or joining chain and is associated with a secretory component. The cDNAs for either IS, L, J chains and secretory components were expressed in four different transnic tobacco lines under the control of 35S promoter. First, the transnic plants expressing heavy and light chains are gross which gives F1 hybrid plants containing IgA antibodies. The hybrid producing the whole IgA is cross with plants expressing J chain. This cross gives rise to hybrid plants having IgA dimers as J chain joins two molecules of IgA. The final cross is made between the hybrid plants containing IgA dimers and transnic lines expressing secretory component. The final hybrids contain the complete secretory IgA antibodies having the four essential components. The secretory plant antibodies have many theoretical advantages as they are predominant antibody type that protects against microbial infections. Now let us come to conclusion. Several important crops have been transformed with desirable transins using different zin transfer techniques. Wide ranges of transnic plants have been developed with a successful expression of foreign gene, 
of interest. Plants have been genetically manipulated and engineered to be resistant against harmful insect pathogens, viruses, herbicide, and environmental stresses. Transic plants with improved nutritional contents in terms of amino acids, fats, iron, and vitamins have also been successfully developed. The taste of certain plants has been enhanced genetically and so also the appearance of some important crops like potatoes and tomatoes. Plants have also been genetically engineered to be used as bioreactors for large scale production of therapeutic proteins and other biomolecules completely novel to them. In spite of numerous transgenic plants that have been successfully produced and tested in laboratory and in some cases in the field, only few of them have entered into the marketplace so far. With the present space with which the plant transgenic resources are going on, there is high possibility that soon the transgenic plants will become an integral part of agriculture and horticultural practices.